Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making a tropical, delicious hummingbird cake. So let's get started. First off, set your oven to 350 so it's nice and hot, and you're gonna wanna grab three cake pans. You could use nine inch or eight inch. The only difference is the bake time, which we'll go over later. I'm using eight inch because it looks nicer. Now, into a large bowl, I'm adding 360 grams or three cups of all-purpose flour. If you add too much, your cake's gonna be dense and bready. To puff things up, one teaspoon of baking soda. This will react with the acid in the pineapple and really make it nice and puffy. And half a teaspoon of baking powder. And to give you some nice contrast, one teaspoon of salt. It seems like a lot, but this is a giant cake. Grab a whisk. Your scale's done. I almost forgot one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. This cake has lovely tropical vibes. Pineapple, banana, cinnamon, some crunchy nuts, and a delicious silky cream cheese frosting. It's a cake that almost everybody loves, and the story behind it's so interesting. It was actually created by the Jamaican Tourism Bureau to promote Jamaica and the tropical flavors of the island, so it's really been successful, except that this cake is insanely popular, and I don't think enough people know it's to promote people going to Jamaica. Come to Jamaica. This is done, this video is not an ad, and now we're gonna go on to the wet ingredients. For this recipe, you'll want two cups of mashed bananas, and mashed bananas should be like from the ripest banana possible, like nasty, disgusting, you would never eat this for lunch bananas. These were regular, beautiful, edible bananas that were yellow, and I just popped them into the oven, 350 for about 10 minutes, until they browned up. This softens them and just kind of breaks the sugars down a bit, so they're appropriate for baking. We'll want two cups, it's about four large bananas, but if you're unsure, you might want to just have an extra banana handy. These are apparently small bananas because I need a little bit over four, just like four and a quarter to get to the two cup mark. Although if you're in a pinch and you don't have the bananas and you don't want to go to the store, like you don't have enough bananas, you could just use a little bit more uh, pineapple. So they're both giving moisture and flavor. I've done it before and it works fine. Right now, I'm gonna mash these bananas. It's really easy since they're out of the oven. And once they're nice and mushed, we can go on to our other wet ingredients. I like to have a little bit of texture left over so I'm not pureeing them or anything. Just mush. Bananas all mushed, I'm setting those aside. We also want one cup or 120 grams of chopped toasted pecans. So these are kind of like the premium ones where half of them are halves and the other half are chopped. Go chop them all. Give your pecans a rough chop, and if you want to use them for the decoration scheme later, just you know get two cups of pecans and chop them. Toasting your nuts will bring out the flavor, and if you're not doing that, you're missing out. So transfer the pecans to a baking sheet, spread them out into an even layer, and just pop them into your oven at 350 for about four minutes. Mix them up, not with your bare hands, and then bake another four minutes or so I never put a timer on, I always forget, but I'm in the kitchen and I'm like, and I run to the oven. That's how you tell they're done. In you go. All right, now in a medium bowl, I'm gonna combine some more wet ingredients, starting with three large room temperature eggs. These are gonna give you some structure and a little bit of richness. If you don't wanna use eggs in the recipe, I would add a little bit more banana, so an equal amount, probably one banana extra. And three. If you don't want to use eggs in this recipe, I get that question all the time. You could use the flaxseed powder, that works really well. You could use applesauce. You could use just an extra banana. Those are all combinations that'll work. They're gonna give you a bit of moisture and structure. Mix those eggs up. And now I'm adding one and a half cups or 360 mils of veggie oil. The oil is the fat we need to make this so soft and delicious, but the nice thing about using oil as opposed to butter in a cake is this cake has to live in the fridge. It has a cream cheese frosting, so the dairy on the outside exposed to the air, this cannot be sitting out at room temperature for hours. If the cake was butter-based, you'd be so disappointed because the cake would be rock hard. You're like, I swear it's delicious. I had a bite right after I made it, but no one eats fresh cake. It's usually maybe like one serving of fresh cake and two days worth of refrigerated cake. Not a problem with oil. One cup of granulated sugar, that's 200 grams. And just mix that in. 
You can dump this in all together, but I like to mix as I go, especially when there's eggs. This mixture looks so lovely and homogenous right now, but if you mix everything at the end, you can end up with clumps and lumps that just leads to problems. Usually I'll use a scale, but for the sugar today, I'm using measuring cups, which is fine. Just make sure you press the brown sugar in. And having done this, I can see this is full of lumps, lumps that are so annoying. So to solve this problem, I'm going to just sprinkle it in and break up any lumps I find as I go. It's a little messy, but it's totally worth it because if you have a lump of brown sugar, it'll stay a lump all the way through baking. But once it bakes, it'll melt and you're gonna have this weird sugary void, which I swear is the punchline to a joke. Let me know in the comments if you have one for me, but I don't love that. I want the cake to have a beautiful crumb throughout, not some weird big gaps in the middle. For some added flavor, two teaspoons of vanilla, 10 mils. And we're gonna give this a mix until it is nice and completely smooth. This smells magically delicious. Oh my gosh. That's nice. See? Look at that. It's really pretty, almost no lumps of brown sugar. Ready to combine. But I wanna answer one question I get a lot first. Can you use less sugar in this? And the answer is yes, you could. It's one of my mom's favorite activities is to like reduce the sugar in a cake recipe and it'll work, but sugar doesn't just make things sweet. It softens the batter as well. That luscious melt in your mouth texture comes from the sugar. So if you reduce it, you're gonna end up with a cake that's less sweet and breadier, which some people like, it's up to you. Our mixture's not complete because we still have to fold in all of our bananas. Add those bananas in. You can see they're nicely mushed. And now we're gonna get the pineapple too. This delicious tropical cake also needs a good dose of pineapple. So get one eight ounce can of crushed pineapple. Do not drain the pineapple juice that goes in the cake too. And we're gonna plop this in. Stir the pineapple and banana right into the rest of the mixture. And this part is done. Oh my gosh, this looks delicious. I actually love this cake because I love banana cakes. I love pineapple cakes and I love cream cheese frosting, so it has all these things that are delicious. And I love pecans too. Do a good job stirring and scrape the bottom because the pineapple juice is so liquidy that you have to put a little bit of effort into mixing. That's nice, I'm really resisting this, the urge to drink it all. Okay, when you have a three layer, nine or eight inch cake, you need a big bowl. I love the way this looks, but it's not big enough. There we go. Mega bowl in place, dry mixture. Pour the wet mixture in and we'll do some very gentle mixing afterwards. Do not over mix your batter. All right, so it's time to mix this together. Be very gentle because you do not want to over mix the batter. Mix it until the streaks are almost disappearing and then you're going to want to add the nuts. Bubble, bubble, toil and travel. Just kidding. This feels like a cauldron. All right. The flour is just about to disappear. So it's time to add the nuts in. This gives you crunch, depth of flavor, and I don't know. I could never live in a world without pecans. I was once this close to being hired. This close to being hired by the pecan board for a project. And I was like, please, I love pecans so much. Didn't happen, it's okay. I continue to spread the word for free. All right, so scrape the bowl down. I just found a giant clump of flour. It's not cool. You'll notice I'm doing this by hand. This is not a job for a mixer, but a mixer will just over mix and you really just want to kind of gently move the batter around so the flour is hydrated and disappears. If it's over mixed, the gluten will be activated in the flour and it's just gonna give you like dense gummy cake. And dense gummy cakes are horrible because you can't even taste the deliciousness. It changes the way it like hits your palate. Not delicious. This is beautifully mixed. It's time to pop this into our three pans. If you're using eight inch or nine inch, doesn't matter. You can butter the edge of your pans or hit them with some baking spray. Parchment round goes right in the middle. The parchment round ensures your cake will not stick and it's like buying peace of mind. It'll come out, you're gonna be happy, nothing bad will happen. 
totally worth it. All right, now you can eyeball it. I always say I'm gonna eyeball it and I use a scale to check because it sparks joy. <laughs> it's very heavy. Time to divide the batter. One third into the first pan, roughly. Just adding a little bit more into the first pan because it looks underfilled compared to the other two. But we're gonna check this with the scale. You wanna have an equal amount of batter in each pan so they bake evenly. They're all gonna be done at the same time. And so your layers look nice and even, which is not the end of the world if they're not, but it's mostly about the bake time. Okay. FYI, that bowl was so heavy, <laughs> so heavy. 1042, 1087. 1090. Perfect. My cake layers are ready to go into the oven. If you're using nine inch layers, 25 to 30 minutes. If you're doing eight inch layers, 30 to 35 minutes. You can chuck them with a skewer in the middle to make sure it comes out clean, or you can do the tap test. If you press gently, the cake should rebound. It shouldn't have a divot. In you go. While my cake layers are cooling, we're gonna make the most amazing but really easy cream cheese frosting. And it's a big batch, so we will not be running short. You wanna grab three sticks or one and a half cups of unsalted butter and have them softened. So you should be able to press lightly with your finger and the butter yields. You can bend it, it's not gonna break. If your butter is too cold, just microwave it at half power for 10 second increments. Plop those into your stand mixer, fitted with a paddle attachment or a big bowl if you're using a hand mixer. I'm gonna cream the butter up just for 30 seconds and then add the cream cheese. And creaming the butter is just medium, medium high speed for a little bit. Just like that. Now we're adding two eight ounce packages of cream cheese. This has also been softened. I just took it out in the morning and let it come to room temperature. If you don't like the idea of leaving something dairy out, then just pop this into the microwave, minus the foil, uh, 30 seconds at half power, and repeat if needed. Now we're gonna add the cream cheese and beat it until it is well mixed and fluffy. It'll be maybe about a minute. All right, if you take a look, this is fluffy and cloudy, beautiful texture. You need to scrape the bowl down, but don't bother doing it now. Let's do that after we add some powdered sugar in. So this is an easy frosting. It's not a French, Italian, or Swiss buttercream where it has to be pretty exact. You're gonna add powdered sugar to taste. Six to eight cups. You need to add like some powdered sugar because it also softens the texture. So one, two, mix on low, let it incorporate and we're gonna continue adding powdered sugar. At the six cup mark, I will be taking a taste and seeing how I like it. Ooh, it softens up so quickly. So remember, before it looked like a cloud of cheese, now it's getting to be silky and droopy. Head shake. Five. I'm five cups in and I have not scraped the bowl down a travesty, so this is like nice and sweet on top, but the bottom is very dense and buttery, cream cheesy, no sugary. You definitely want to scrape things down, especially if it's a cold day or it's just cold in your house and the ice cold bowl seeps all the heat out of your mixture and it gets even harder, which has totally happened here. <laughs> Cup number six. I'm gonna mix this on low so the sugar doesn't fly out in a huge cloud. Once it's incorporated, increase to medium low, add one teaspoon of vanilla for flavor, oh, or a tablespoon, and let this mix for about a minute. You can scrape the bowl down again, you can keep mixing it if it looks a little bit lumpy, and when it's nice and smooth, we're gonna get this cake together. I had to whip this for like three minutes because this bowl was like ice and it cooled all the butter at the bottom down, so there were lumps everywhere and it drove me to the bad place. But the mixer fixed everything. Time for a taste. Mm. So good. 
It's time to assemble and decorate our cake, so grab your favorite cake plate or platter and let's get to work. I let my cake layers cool completely in the pan. You could invert them onto a wire rack. I'm inverting them onto my hand because they're ice cold now. <laughs> Remove your paper, enjoy the smell, and place that in the center of your platter. I'll be running my mixture in like five second increments just to loosen the frosting back up because it can lose some of that beautiful silky texture if it sits. I'm gonna spread about three quarters of a cup of frosting onto the first layer. Spread your frosting into an even layer. A hummingbird cake, by the way, is also called a doctor bird cake, which I find very lovely. Hummingbirds are also called doctor birds in Jamaica from what I've read. If this is not true, let me know so I don't spread any false information. Second layer goes on, and now we're gonna add three quarters of a cup more frosting. Spread that out too. If you watch all my videos, you might notice that there's two hummingbird cake videos, this one and an old one. The old one makes a smaller six inch cake, which I think is so cute, but I had some comments asking for a bigger, more sharing size of a cake. So I redeveloped the recipe to be larger. And in this version, I'm just gonna do a really simple decoration scheme. But if you wanna go wild and make some dehydrated pineapple flowers, you can click up here for the old video and there's a full explanation. It's very easy, but it does take a little bit of time. All right, whipped that up because this is the outside frosting which really counts. The inside frosting is just for taste. I'm gonna add the remaining frosting on top and work it down the side. Cream cheese frosting is notoriously soft, so if your cake feels unstable to you, before you add the final coat of frosting on, just pop it into the fridge for maybe 20 minutes so it firms up. Okay. Start working that down the side. I'm smoothing the frosting on now, and we're just going to do a really simple decoration scheme with some crushed pecans. I'm gonna smooth the edge out now with a bench scraper. If the smoothing is taking you to the bad place, just give it a swoopy organic finish and sprinkle some nuts on top. It's gonna to be delicious and beautiful. Cream cheese frosting is not for everyone to decorate with. Once your cake's nice and smooth or swooped up, finish it off with a sprinkle of chopped pecans. They could be toasted or raw, it's totally up to you. I'm just gonna add a little bit on the edge to make a nice ring, but you can do whatever you'd like. Chill your cake for a few minutes, then give it a slice and it's ready to enjoy. The way those flavors hit is so good and the cream cheese frosting just brings everything together. I hope you had a chance to make this recipe and if you like this video, check out my cake playlist.